I'm Blake Hargreaves, and this is Future Stops. The music you're hearing is a live recording of Zeta, composed by Eric de Cleric for seven organs. You heard that right, seven organs. You might be asking yourself, where can someone hear a piece for seven organs? Today on Future Stops, we visit Orgel Park in Amsterdam, a performance space, research lab, and technical wonder containing six permanently installed pipe organs and several other instruments representing centuries of European musical tradition. This fascinating building full of pipe organs did not start as a concert hall. Trevor Grail is the artistic assistant at Orgel Park. It started off as a uh, Dutch Reformed church, and it was inaugurated on Christmas Day of 1918. And uh, it's quite uh, a compact little space, but uh, it could fit about more or less 1,500, 1,400 uh, congregants. Just shortly after, in 1922, they added the uh, the the, the organ. Zauer's a company in Germany, of course, and this was the organ that uh, served the church. And uh, it, it stayed that way for many years. Uh, finally, almost 100 years later, it, uh, it changed in 1994. And I'm not exactly sure. I would probably guess that, um, you know, Holland is a very secular country. So uh, I think probably what happened is that there weren't enough churchgoers to kind of upkeep the, the building and in 1994, it changed and it was taken into the hands of a company called Staatsherstel, or a company that uh, looks after monuments. So the, the building uh, has a special status as a monument. It's, it's quite old. And after 1994, it turned into, it was many, many things. It was a dance studio. Uh, it was an IT studio. It was a rep- rehearsal hall. It, uh, it didn't really have any fixed fixed thing that it did and then came along in 2003 the uh, utopa foundation and that's uh, a very interesting foundation founded by uh, luke dykman and they presented a plan that would make a great use of the space and the vision was that it would be a concert hall for organ music and one of the aims i think maybe uh, the most important uh, thing about the utopa foundation is they want to provide people with chances and in this case um what this what the foundation wants to do is present uh the role of the organ in many different many different lights so uh we do so by we commission uh, the artistic director johan lamas he commissions many 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 new compositions every year it's a study facility we have concerts uh, master classes uh, hans fidom is in charge of uh, the research and education part of, of what the stichting does so there's symposia uh, the programming connects the organ to other instruments, genres, and disciplines. So it's 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 pretty much. I, I really don't know how to nail down what we do in a few words. It's kind of a. There's a lot of things that that we do, but the most important thing is to provide musicians or people uh, with uh, opportunities. Eric de Klerk is a composer in the Netherlands. As a student, he composed his first organ piece for a barrel organ, an instrument which mechanically reads punch cards like a player piano. But this work only premiered in the Orgel Park ten years later, after the instrument he wrote it for was moved there. At one point, my uh, teacher, Gilius van Bergrijk, said, well, there's this barrel organ, which is a mechanical dance organ, in fact, uh, which was then based in the Stedelijk Museum. Uh, he said, well, uh, if you would like to do that, you could write a piece for that. And that was my first the first time I ever thought about writing for an organ. And since this, this, this is a mechanical organ, which by then still was with, with these books inside, uh, was more or less close to, to uh, electronic music and, and the way it was made. So, yeah, I thought, well, that's nice to do. And... Uh, uh, so I, I then wrote my first organ piece, which was in 2001. But then when the piece was finished, the, the museum decided they would renovate the whole museum. And then the organ was kicked out. Uh, <laughs> and it, took, it took like almost 10 years to get, the first, to get the first performance of the piece. 
and by then the this organ was uh, placed in the in the Orgel Park. This barrel organ joined the six permanently installed at Orgel Park, which is a fascinating showcase of historical European organ building traditions, while at the same time innovating all the way to 21st century digital technologies. So um, the oldest uh, instrument that we have actually in the building is a very, uh, a very small organ. It's called a cabinet organ, and it's from 1767. It looks, it's called a cabinet organ because it looks like, uh, it looks like one of these old secretaires, maybe that you're, you know, somebody in your family has. Uh, it looks quite like a wardrobe. And uh, if you open up the, the doors to it, um, then you see pipes and the, the, the keyboard pulls out. It looks like a cabinet because um, this is unconfirmed, but this is, this, is what I've, this is what I've heard, that there was a, in the 18th century, there was a tax on uh, organs or musical instruments. So this was kind of a very clever way to not, not pay tax. So you know, I don't have an organ at home, I just have a, it's, a, it's my wardrobe, you know. That's the oldest organ we have, and uh, that plays very much like a harmonium. It's split into two sides, so you have specific registers. You have six for the right, six for the left, and you can play it by uh, pumping a small bellow with your foot. Uh, and probably the next oldest, I would say, is the Zauer organ from 1922, the German uh, maker. And uh, as I said earlier, that's the organ that was built into the church. The organ is a monument. It's a very, uh, it's a very unique, uh, has a very unique sound. There's something quite reedy about it. It almost sounds like a harmonium. Some of the stops, I would say. And um, yeah, that's from 1922. <sighs> the next one probably would be the, it'd probably be the, the busy drone. It's a, um, it's a barrel organ uh, built by the company Mortier, and that was built in 1924. And it was meant as a dance organ, so it plays like a music box. It plays paper, uh, paper scores, paper, uh, paper books, and uh, that has a very fascinating history because in the 70s it was moved to the the City Museum of Amsterdam, and it came under the care of a stichting called the Bezige Bay or the the Busy Bee, and uh, the this uh, foundation uh, wanted new compositions to be written for this organ, not just, you know, hits of the 20s and foxtrots and waltzes and all these things, but they wanted uh, new commissions to be written. So many, many important uh, Dutch composers from the from the, the 50 or 60 years ago, like um, uh, Louis Andries uh, or um, uh, Jansen, or th th these uh, these people have written pieces for this, and this is in our uh, possession now. And in 2013, it was retrofitted with a computer and MIDI magnets, so anybody that's that's that wants to make new pieces for this can can work with Ableton or or Logic or whatever they want to do. Just across from the busy drone, if you look uh, look directly across, uh, there's a very interesting, I don't know what the right word would be, fancy. <laughs> it's very ornate, sorry, that, that's a better word, a very ornate organ. And it's by uh, the company Mozart from 1925. <laughs> And this was a house organ installed somewhere in Vienna, I believe. The sound is is quite uh, sort of Germanic, so it's it sounds like the the Zau organ. Mm -hmm. 
after that, uh, there's a small uh, chest organ made in 2006, I believe, by uh, a Dutch company in the in the east of the uh, rather the middle of the Netherlands called uh, Soest. And I guess on the other side of, of where that is usually stored, we have the Van Straten organ. Our version is a, is a copy. It has two manuals, and the first manual is fitted with um, what's called a blockwerk. So uh, when you're performing on that, many, many pipes are sounding per note. And that organ is the only organ that we have right now that is in quarter comma uh, mean tone. And I think that if, if I'm not mistaken, there's just two left. And that is the the organ, as Thomas Trotter calls it, with the unpronounceable name. And it's called the Verschuren organ. And that is uh, perhaps the largest instrument we have here. It has the three manuals. It's a three manual instrument and it's built in the style of a cavalier col, um, even though the builder is a, is a, is a Dutch builder called Vischuren. It's exactly, uh, it's, a, it's more or less a cavalier col copy with the anche and the, the, the pedals uh, to facilitate that. And last but not least, the piece de résistance, I guess, is the brand new uh, Utopa Baroque organ. And um, that's uh, the newest edition. I think it was inaugurated in 2017. The idea was to build an organ that would be as close as, as, as we could get with what we know, because we don't really know that much about uh, what, what Bach would have had. So there was a huge uh, research stream for at least five years that went into planning this. And uh, it's very interesting, actually, because halfway through, as I understand, halfway through this process, there was a bit of a existential moment with, OK, what are we doing? Why are we making just a Baroque organ to play music of the past. You know, part of the, the goal of the Orchel Park is, is, is giving, you know, breathing new life into the organ. How can we make this instrument attractive for, for new things? Or how can we make this instrument attractive for composers? And that, at that moment, it was decided to also join up with uh, the Sinewa Company, which is a company in Dusseldorf, which is responsible for uh, many, many very new, interesting developments in in, in uh, organ building. And so uh, this organ is quite unique because it has two organs in one, I guess you could say. It has two ways of working, and uh, if you play it from upstairs, it works with the abstracts or um, with trackers, I guess you would say. It plays exactly the touch in the feel would be very close to something that Bach uh, would have had. Um, but if you play it from downstairs, from the new console, it doesn't work with abstracts. It works uh, uh, trackers. It works with magnets, and it works with a special software uh, provided uh, by and magnets provided by the Sinewa company. But literally, but the organ, everything is, 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 is Baroque. It sounds Baroque. It plays Baroque. But when you play it from downstairs, you can control things like the air pressure or the, the speed of the opening of the magnets. And this gives, uh, this gives these Baroque pipes quite a different, quite a different sound, um, which is very inspiring to young makers. It is very important because, well, two reasons. One reason is that for organists, 
it's uh, a completely different situation than being in a church uh, and more or less being stuck to the same repertoire. Now they can use different organs in this beautiful space and there's a, there's a different audience for them. And, and the other importancy is that uh, the mission of the Orgel Park was to uh, broaden the group of people who are interested in organs and also connect with other musicians. And, and they really achieved that uh, because now, well, since, since it opened, there were concerts in more or less every genre and uh, almost all musicians I know here in Amsterdam had at least one time where they had a project in the Orgelpark, whether it's old music, classical music, pop music, uh, jazz, uh, free improv. Uh, there were projects with dance, uh, with theater. So they changed the whole concept of organ music. The organ is a really exciting instrument and uh, something that is completely, I think, that the Orgelpark is, is absolutely 100, 200, 300 uh, percent successful in has been to really change this idea of the organ as a sort of a static instrument that perhaps one would find uh, in a church or a concert hall and has really made that much more dynamic. And this comes from all 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 sides. Uh, so from on Johan's side, the types of people that he sort of chooses to program music for, he has a, he, he mostly, uh, well, not mostly, but it, uh, one big important thing to him is having people that aren't necessarily organs or uh, organists or don't know anything about the instrument. He puts them into contact with the organ, and what comes out is something that is very unique. And on on the uh, on the other side of that, the research, uh, the R and D side, we have um, Hans Fiedum, who uh, has researched many different uh, histories of the organ. And one one of those big histories is that. Uh, Working with people like uh, Christophe Delin, for example, from France, who who uh, play portative organs, that the organ actually never really was a a static dead thing in terms of the a fl not dead but flat. You know that there's this this valve. You open it and the sound is is totally flat. The, there's a lot of research that goes into that from these small portative organs that that say actually no, uh, you know the the air pressure was always dynamic. It was always uh, a sort of a singing instrument and um, the Van Straten organ, for example, is hand pumped uh, and uh, those bellows can be, be uh, manipulated. They can be choked. They can be sort of um, pushed, put too far, kind of an overdrive type thing. So things like this from the programming side, from the R&D side, the Ojo Park's been around, I think, for about 13, 13 or 14 years now. So I think the level of organ experimentation or organ music making in Holland is is really at another level, I think. This next level of organ music and building in the Netherlands is brought to life by the intrepid spirit of the composers, who are inspired by this facility to compose otherworldly works of music for this hitherto impossible combination of instruments. In 2011, I got a commission from the Orgelpark to write a piece for uh, as they then said, for all the organs, which were which were seven at that time. Well, uh, there, there's this this uh, collective called 1790, and they organized the big uh, Janus Xenakis festival. And for that, I got this commission to write for all the organs, which of course was a uh, yeah, it's like amazing. You're in the candy store. <laughs> Well, to begin with, I, I didn't know anything about organs except for this barrel organ. And so I, I, uh, I took my time to, to get a, got acquainted with all the organs, which meant that I, I think I spent like three days, uh, three whole days being in the Orgel Park on my own, uh, trying out all the organs and all the registrations, so let, uh, all the stops and all the possibilities. But it was it was great to to have the opportunity to to be there and just listen and try out sounds and of course then when you're there on your own you cannot hear all the combination all the combinations of sounds but yeah it's up to your imagination then.
but we needed to have a conductor, which was my, my good friend Bas Wiegers. And uh, the organs, the organists had uh, video monitors to see the conductor because they are somewhere behind their organ or in their organ. So coordination was quite difficult. It was quite tough. And uh, I remember we had to do it early in the morning because uh, it was with, uh, that was with seven uh, performers. And of course they all had other things to do. So we started it. I think we started at seven sometimes even. So we had rehearsal from seven in the morning till nine. And, uh, and then after that you had, I had the feeling, oh, this, this was a complete day already. It was so intense to, to do that. Yeah, it inspires me to 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 go beyond what what you know because of the tradition and because you know well this is how an orchestra can sound and of course you can you can push the limits a bit but this whole idea of of having seven organs well one organ can already be really really loud so imagine you have seven that's like like uh, a group of monsters so that yeah it was really inspiring to. Uh, to work on that and well of course also to uh, to really try to do it in such a way that it's not just um, only loud and 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 just a big mess of sounds I was really trying to make it overwhelming but then still in this enormous sound that you could differentiate in in what you hear
You're listening to the Future Stops podcast, an initiative of the Royal Canadian College of Organists. My name is Blake Hargreaves, and I'm your host as we explore the world of the 21st century organ. We just heard today's feature piece, Zeta, by Eric de Cleric, for seven organs, recorded at Orgel Park in 2011. Today on the show, we visit Amsterdam's Orgel Park, where normally in spring they would be launching a busy festival season, but of course that's not possible this year. The artistic team at the center have come up with a unique solution to deal with this problem, inviting local composers to take up residence in the space for two weeks at a time, each composing a segment of one long marathon composition. We spoke to a couple of the participants about their experience working on this special project, including Eric de Cleric, who in this context chose not to use an organ at all. In, in the Orgel Park, they now have... Uh this enormous new wonderful organ which is called the utopa organ which has uh well it, you can play it uh with a with a, a keyboard which sends midi to the organ and in fact you can even connect two organs to this uh, keyboard so it's it's like a totally new instrument and it's so uh wonderful it's like a uh, uh it's like an acoustic synthesizer in fact and now many composers want to write for this new instrument. But um, I thought, well, um, if I would want to write for this instrument, it would take me at least half a year to, to be able to work on, with it, to be able to do something really interesting. And for this composition, I had like, well, I could be there for two weeks. So I thought, well, no, no, I want to do something different. And also, I was number five in the row, I think. And I, I already knew that, that uh, the composers who were before me, they all wrote for this organ. So I thought, well, then something else has to happen. And then I decided to not write for, not use any organ at all, but use the building as an instrument. Um, so I, I spent uh, like at least a whole day to... Uh, walk through the building and tap on things and scrape and and walk on wooden stairs and walk on on uh, uh, stone stairs and to trying to find out every noise which was possible in this building, opening doors, closing doors, stuff like that. Yeah, so now it's 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 a piece for the for the building. Um, also, in a way, to, to honor this building as a place where more or less everything is possible. Uh, we will need uh, nine people to perform it. And, and so, so they have a, a route through the building where they have to, at certain moments, have to do certain things. So I think it will, in the, in the whole composition, it will work as a, uh, a kind of a insert of something completely different, which also... Uh, I think it's, it's good because it, it opens up the ears. And then if after my piece, uh, the next piece is also played on organs, then you, you hear something new. Yeah, I'm uh, Jasna Ritskuic, composer based in Amsterdam. Uh, just, just the feeling to, to be in a room, in, 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 in a big hall, and, and to touch and then to, to, to listen to the sounds of the instrument. So the first reaction was uh, extremely uh, um, powerful and, and at the same time scary. And it was like I, I wanted to try to find any kind of communication that I could with an instrument itself. So basically, I never worked with organs before. Um, and um, for me, it was quite um, strange. I, I couldn't have any pre conception because I didn't know what I'm entering to before in my music I quite often um, was using like the, the electromagnetic spectrum of sound and um, this uh, aspect uh, was possible to also try and explore with this instrument because uh, there is a digital console uh, and one can also control the instrument from like uh, a different perspective and it can control the instrument from from like uh, an amazing machine basically 
which was already built there. But uh, in, in between this console and the actual instrument, there is this whole mechanism of solenoids. And those solenoids are actually the electro, uh, uh, they are uh, functioning with the uh, electromagnetism. And this is what I was thinking that might be an interesting for me to, to try out to see if there is any possibility to get some interesting sound by just trying different, uh, possibilities of how could I listen to this instrument. So, uh, I, I simply put uh, a coils, coils, um, induction coils in uh, in a different spots of the instrument next to the solenoids, and then I was then simply trying to see what would be an interesting combination, uh, and uh, especially when it comes to the sound of the different uh, groups uh, that I was using for this piece. I was just trying to find what is on the other side of the of the instrument next to the, the actual sound. My name is Boris Basimer. I'm a composer working with uh, opera, electronic music, organs. Yeah, I, I chose three organs. The their newest uh, Baroque Utopa organ and uh, the Sauer organ and the Frisure organ and they're kind of uh, facing each other in a, in a triangle I felt like that would be uh, yeah that was what I was missing anyway in the lockdown to have some conversation and to hear hear multiple voices live speak together and I thought they all have such a beautiful character it would be great to have them speak together in one piece so it's uh, it's part of the Ketting composite, and I'm uh, responding to the previous composer who who left me some kind of cloud of um, air noises and mechanical noises coming from the Topa organ, and I'm I'm responding with the Utopa and its full resonating singing power, and joined with the other two organs on its sides, like a, like accompaniment. It's a trio. Not since the installation of the six pipe organs in the Palace of Mafra, Portugal, in the early 1800s, has a space been so richly endowed with a sort of musical hydra. And in this case, the organs have so much which distinguishes them from each other and allows an audience to hear the differences in building style, voicing, articulation, and even tuning one next to the other. This unique space advances the artistic practice of organ playing and listening by offering a chance to combine sounds which are normally trapped in separate buildings under separate domains. The unity expressed by this project gives a glimpse into what's possible for the pipe organ and the context in which it exists. We'd like to thank our guests from Amsterdam for joining us on Future Stops today. If you'd like to learn more about any of these composers or the Orgel Park, all of the links and info can be found on our social media pages, which include Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Subscribe today to the Future Stops podcast and social accounts and join our growing community of enthusiasts. Future Stops is a podcast from the Royal Canadian College of Organists, produced by Andrew O'Connor, with Haley Raymond as community manager and executive producer Elizabeth Shannon. And I'm your host, Blake Hargreaves. Thanks for listening.